Thank you very much, Scott. Next, Patricia Farrell. elegiac sonnets, which I then translated from the Italian because that seems to be the fashionable thing to do. Uh, it was fashionable then, it's fashionable now. It won't be tomorrow because, well, for the very sound reason that the poetry is in the poetics, not in the slash doublets or the headlines, but far be it from uh, an arrivist fool not to hang on to coattails. Um, so I will read um, three of the originals and the same three um, as translated, and that they are translations, um, you will have to believe me. They are, um, but beyond that fact, um, it's dubious. Uh, how will I court the daylight? Two. Consulted in brilliant instant, he was brilliant. Visited, a view attempted, diverting day life. Translating in the bodies chanted, loud, a variegated garden. Works an eye mark, which was no story. Perfect intention, retold by walking, on buried like to life. Six. That all a great analysis suggests an atmosphere, an energy adopted from and went to dying to each April, which to speculate absolute zero and youth, the air supported an exultant April, the same discovered, the basis of his own life to encounter, and conscience April and ever. For a living every detail seems, to compare a singularity and rival, the book says is exemplary, is contradictory. Twelve. This movement was night of him, plays with boundless raised past since, blindfold the quality of collection, and he was first world firmament of remains, way of mountain, a revolution, a complement of rebellion, taught childhood bribery and the use of land, speculating, the arguments unconvinced, all qualified as contained, continued, obtained as citizen, more world newly. Daylight translated. Two. Listen up, I'm shedding light on the arse ends of instance, the glaring errors of time on each circuit of a vista of uninvited visitation, a veering of the vital organs from the menu of the day, traducing the small intestine in one supreme moment in a body of loud farts, generated by life in this garden of variegated vegetables, Packed like anchovies against the contours of propriety, eyes fixed on lovingly washing one bollock than the other in weak tea brewed by nuns in a more exalted history. The cheesy honour of intentions, a cantata of raccoons retweeting a sepia image of frilly knee length knickers that, anyways, will only make you come too soon. Six. Capiche. This hilarious state of affairs, this fabricator of airy sugar cones of colourful ice cream, is in need of a major rectal examination. Do you have either the will or even an edited light lift expendable launch system to do this before it is too late? The nymphettes and lunar groupies have already sussed their imminent demises from the what's on pages of the April issue. These pretty pigeons will enjoy sweet Fanny Adams from the swarm by Hippo Spunk Rejuvenation Plan. They will be copying an eyeful from the balconies of their uplift bras as they explode in spring. Look, chum, at this point in time, the fundamental issue, and we're elephants, so we won't forget the numbers on the clock, is to prop this life up against itself and stagger with it from April into May. Supposing it easy-peasy having hanky-panky while singing Lesson Dorma comes between ambition and a bad case of the flu. To live with your eyes full of disinfectant, confronting the same ghosts, singing to each other again and then again, painfully unravelling the perfumed vapours they expel. The wandering souls whose fixed green skins became the parchment on which their stories are described. This adult exemplary life is contradicted by the missives they perform, 
the words fermenting into vintage mouthwash gurgling underneath your tongue. Twelve. I ask you, while the movers and shakers of our benighted times are still in the stands of Piccolo, conning timely fine quintries and trying not to piss on their Gucci shoes, out here contractors carve up the fields with gusto. It's a bit late to reminisce about the sunset when the entire fucking firmament is screwed to a standstill. However, is it enough to straddle the mountain in a complimentary fashion, ripping the meaty parcels of tagliatelle? Mum won't save us this time, and the statement that our brains have been carved into tiny pieces is no excuse for reducing our ability to think to folded paper models of the land of our childhood. Did our literary forefathers fall flat because they were a trifle kind of convinced, or were they just a little drunk? We can't go on picking the pears out of the fruit salad of sensibility, shoving them in until our mouths are stretched beyond shouting in the citadel, nor write the wrongs of the world with the free borrow. <laughs>